Okay, so in this lesson of initial expedition training, we're going to look at sleeping bags and roll mats. So I've got three lovely comfy beds here, and we'll have a look at the different types of sleeping bags and roll mats that you can get, and what you're gonna be looking for if you want to buy these yourself. Now, one thing you might notice about these sleeping bags is the shape. Um, if you've just had a sleeping bag that you've used for sleepovers, going to friends' houses, then you may well have one that's just rectangular. But if we look at these sleeping bags, and I'll just hold it up a bit so you can see a bit better. Okay, the shape of these is a little bit different. So it's nice and wide at the shoulders, and then it gets much narrower towards the feet. And this is what's called a mummy sleeping bag. And that's not to do with the parents, that is to do with Egyptian mummies. So if we look at the shape of this, we can picture an Egyptian mummy in the sarcophagus. It's narrowed down at their feet, wide up at their shoulders. And there's two main reasons for that. The first being that if it's nicely shaped to our body, then there isn't a lot of spare space. The more spare space there is, then the more air there is inside that our bodies have to heat up. So if we've got spare space, we're trying to heat up um, air that is not actually going to keep us warm. So if it's nicely shaped to our body, then uh, we don't have to heat as much up with our body heat and it keeps us warmer. Um, and the other reason is we're just using less fabric, less material. So if you picture a rectangular sleeping bag, it's going to have a lot more fabric, a lot more for us to carry around. So this is quite similar to my body shape and not a huge amount of spare space. So most Dexpedition sleeping bags are probably going to be a mummy kind of shape. So one thing that you might want to consider when you go into a shop to look at sleeping bags is what the filling is made out of. And essentially there are two main types that you've got to choose from is a synthetic filling or a natural filling. And a natural filling most of the time is going to be down. So that is um, the feathers, the down from uh, geese and ducks. Um, so if you don't use animal products then you wouldn't want to get a down sleeping bag um, it is a good insulator but there are a lot of synthetic materials that are as good as down and the way that all fillings work is that it's the air trapped between uh, the strands of filling that actually insulates you and in the case of feathers and down it's the air in between the feathers the trouble with down is as soon as it gets wet all of those feathers stick together and down is a very bad one for if you do get your sleeping bag wet, all those feathers stick together, there's no air being trapped in between them um, and it loses all of its insulating ability if you do get it wet. So that's one, one downside to down. Um, in terms of what kind of synthetic uh, filling you want, you will probably see all sorts of fancy um, brand names and um, scientific terms that tell you what the filling is inside it. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would just look at how much does the sleeping bag weigh and how warm is it going to keep me? Because that's the two things that we're looking at. Alongside that, you're also, of course, going to be looking at how expensive it is. So if you've got a sleeping bag that keeps you really nice and warm, is really lightweight, then it's probably going to be really expensive. So you might have to compromise a bit on how much it weighs. You might have to be lugging about a slightly heavier sleeping bag so that it's a bit cheaper. But these are all things that you need to weigh up um, when you're looking at buying a sleeping bag. So um, in terms of how warm it keeps you, we rate sleeping bags by seasons. So this sleeping bag here is a one to two season. It's quite thin, relatively thin and it's only going to keep me warm probably in late spring to early autumn and maybe even a smaller window than that, um, depending on how cold you generally feel. But when you buy a sleeping bag, it will tell you these things. So if I have a look at uh, the case for this blue sleeping bag, this one to two season sleeping bag, then it tells me lots of details about what temperature I'm going to be comfortable at in this sleeping bag. So overall, it says that I can use this sleeping bag in plus five to plus 20 degrees. 
and it tells me that down to eight degrees, unfortunately some of this is rubbed off, but this says comfort here. So your comfort level in the sleeping bag is gonna be down to about a temperature of eight degrees. Down to about four degrees is what they've called the transition, which means we're not gonna be as comfortable. We might be shivering a little bit. We might wake up in the night being very cold, but it's still gonna be all right for us to sleep overnight where it's four degrees. It's then got an extreme limit of minus 11 degrees, but it does say that between four and minus 11, you've got a risk. And it's going to be pretty unpleasant sleeping in minus 11 in this sleeping bag. I really wouldn't sleep um, in this section here within this sleeping bag. Ideally, it would be where overnight is going to be above eight degrees and it's going to be fairly warm outside. OK, and alongside how warm it keeps us, we want to know how heavy it is for us to carry around our expedition. So. This particular sleeping bag is 925 grams. And the other things it tells me on here are the max height of the person that can sleep in it and the max chest width of that person as well. So you might want to look at that if you're a particularly tall person. Or if you're a particularly short person, you might not want to buy something that's this long because you're carrying around a lot of spare material. Okay, so that's a one to two season. And then we've got this next one is the same brand. Okay, so that was a Van Gogh Ultralight 200. I'm not advertising it, just saying that's what I've got to show you. And this is an Ultralight 900. And this is a three to four season. So looking at the same numbers, this says we can go from minus five up to 20. Our comfort level is down to zero degrees. So we're going to be comfortable in this a lot longer than we were in the blue one. Our transition level down to minus five. So we can sleep down to minus five, but we're going to be shivering. We're going to be a bit chilly under overnight and it's not going to be brilliant. And if we really want to risk it, but it's not a good idea at all, then the extreme of this is minus 22. But I really wouldn't do that. Uh, but in order to get that extra warmth, we're having to carry around a bit more weight. So this is 1500 grams, one and a half kilograms. Um, and it's got about the same user dimensions in there. So the person sleeping in it can be about the same height as in the blue sleeping bag. Now, this last one I've got doesn't have quite as many details on it. Uh, in fact, on the bag, it's got very little. Um, this is, this goes down to minus six degrees. Okay, and I've looked it up online um, and that says that that's its comfort temperature. So actually this one goes six degrees colder than the orange one, okay? So this one is better in terms of the warmth it's gonna give you. Um, it's also lighter than the orange one. This one is 1.2 kilograms, while the orange one was 1.5. So it's both warmer and lighter. As such, it was more expensive. Okay, That is what's going to happen. You're going to get, when you get lighter weight, more technical materials and um, that keep you warmer, it's generally going to be more expensive. Um, but this is a very good sleeping bag and it will keep you warmer and it is lighter, less weight to carry around. So as well as how warm it's gonna keep us and how much it weighs, there's a few other features that we might want to look at. Now, a lot of sleeping bags will sell the same sleeping bag, but with the zip on either the left or the right. And you might need to try it out in order to work out what way round suits you. But when you're lying in this, if you want to maybe have it slightly open to keep you cooler, um, there might be one side that's easier um, for you to have it on. So um, it's a bit of personal preference there. Other features that you might have um, is an extra sort of inner closure underneath the hood. So you can close that up nice and tight around your neck, keep you nice and warm, and then you've got the hood on. Okay, so let's show you. OK, 
okay and then we want to make sure that we can fit in it so these ones say that they have a limit of someone that's 1.9 meters i am not that tall zip it right up probably okay and then a lot of sleeping bags will have this inner seal so i can tighten that I'm tighten that right up so I've got essentially my body nice and snug inside that. Tighten it more than that even. And that might be enough if it's not super super cold but then also you might have an adjustment on the hood and you can really really tuck yourself in <laughs> and get really snug. And then get stuck. Ooh, it's quite warm. If it's a slightly cooler day and you're someone that likes to have one leg out of the covers uh, in bed, then um, check that the sleeping bag you're buying has got a bottom zip as well. A lot of them will have and you can let a little bit of air in. If you're getting a little bit too hot down the bottom but you still want to be nice and snug at the top, stick a leg out. Okay however you want to do it but bear in mind with the sleeping bag you're buying make sure that it does do that because this one the zip only goes down to it's probably about thigh level knee level okay so I wouldn't really be able to do that as well without undoing the zip almost halfway up okay it still has a bottom zip that I can open it up but still. there we go so I can do that and left a bit of fresh air in there. And that's probably all the features that you're going to look for. This one has a funny little pocket. So you can always put your phone in there or your torch so that it's always handy if you need to get up in the night, go to the loo or something. Um, but it's probably not an essential thing you're going to be looking for. And finally with sleeping bags we want to make sure that it packs down nice and small so that we can put it in our expedition bag and um, it's not going to take up all the space we've got no space for food um, so all of these sleeping bags have got stuff sacks they'll come with it some of them might come with a storage bag as well because the materials might not like being squashed down all the time so you might not want to keep them in the stuff sack it might not be very good for them but when you buy them it'll, it'll tell you that Okay, and it's a relatively small bag. You might not think that that's going to fit in there, um, but it will. Okay, and that's the initial size that this sleeping bag is packed down to. It's actually relatively big, but a lot of them will come with this secondary strap, either attached to the same bag or in the case of this one, it's a separate section, so I'll put that over the bag. And what you do with that is put it over the top. And then I'm going to tighten each of these straps and really, really pull down and it will compact everything even more. taken about a third of the size off of that it's now pretty compact um i could probably go a little bit smaller if i really really wanted to so fairly compact for a nice warm three four season sleeping bag that's gonna keep you comfortable down to minus five this one and of course if you've got something that's not going to keep you as warm, it's generally going to be a lot smaller. So, so slightly messy. I did that in a bit of a rush, 
and I could probably do a little bit more. And it's a bit over half the size, um, but a lot lighter because it's not going to keep us as warm. So those are the main things we want to look at for a sleeping bag. How warm is it going to keep us and how much does it weigh and how much space is it going to take up in our pack? And obviously cost is going to come into that, but I would always compromise on how much it's going to weigh. So have a slightly heavier sleeping bag than how warm it's going to keep you. Don't buy something that isn't going to keep you warm enough just because it's cheaper. Okay, buy something that's going to be slightly heavier because it's cheaper instead. Okay, compromise on the weight rather than the warmth. You don't want to be super uncomfortable, shivering all night um, and really, really cold when you're on your expedition. Okay, so now we're going to look at roll mats. So a roll mat has two main functions and actually the more important one is probably not the one you're thinking. Um, the most important function is to insulate you from the ground. Even if you're in a really warm sleeping bag, if you're lying straight on the ground sheet of your tent, you are probably going to get really cold because all the cold from um, the ground is going to come through straight to you and it's not going to be very pleasant. Okay, so the main thing is to keep you at a distance from the ground and insulate you from the ground. Um, the other thing, of course, is to keep you a bit more comfortable. When we've pitched our tent, hopefully we've found somewhere without lots of rocks and bumps and uncomfortable bits. But if we have a nice layer of padding, then it's going to make it more comfortable. So starting from the most basic, this one costs about five pounds and is about a centimetre, maybe less of foam. OK, and that is the basic roll mat that you can get that lots of people use and it does the job fine. It's also really quite nice and lightweight. OK, so that's an absolutely fine one to use. Um, it might not do the insulating and the comfort as well as some others, but it does the job. You then see a lot of people having self-inflating mats. Okay, so it's not quite a blow-up bed, but it's a fair bit thicker than our foam mat. Okay, so it's a good couple of centimetres. Okay, and it's full of air, so it's better at insulating. Um, they say they're self-inflating, so when you put it down, what you do is you open up this valve and it sucks the air in. Generally, it won't draw enough air in to be comfortable, so you have to inflate the last little bit yourself. So if I open this, it'll start emptying a bit. Okay, so if I were to just open it and leave it out to inflate, it would only get to sort of medium firmness. So you're gonna to have to fill the last bit yourself. So you just use that valve, blow over the top of it, make sure it's fairly clean. Make sure you close the valve before too much escapes. So the self-inflating mat is generally going to be a bit more comfortable, have a bit more padding and insulation. Um, generally they're a little bit heavier, particularly if you get a cheaper one, um, because they need to be a bit stronger material to not pop. So again it's a bit of a compromise between carrying a little bit more weight but being a little bit more comfortable. Um, you might also notice I've got a couple of pillows some people won't take a pillow at all, they'll just use some clothes or something. Um, just remember if you're using some spare clothes, then if they get wet and you have to um, change clothes, you might not have your pillow anymore. Um, this is just a, a normal sort of pillow, just um, microfiber filling, and it squishes down to about half the size. So that's one kind of travel pillow you can use. Um, you can also use a self-inflating one, um, like the roll mat. This inflates on its own. I filled it up with a bit of extra air and it just gives you a little bit to put your head on. I'd probably still put a, um, a jumper or something over that because it's a pretty low pillow. Um, but there are some you can get. Some people will use them, some won't so much. And then the final roll mat is this one here. Um, again, we've gone up a bit in price range. 
Um, we've got that mummy shape again, so we're saving some weight by it not being rectangular at the bottom. Um, and it's thicker again, so it's probably half as thick again as the blue one. And it's a little bit lighter weight, so it's probably made with some slightly fancier materials, makes it a bit lighter weight. So we're getting more benefit, more insulation and more comfort, but not quite as heavy. So that's why it's a bit more expensive, but it's a pretty good roll mat, keeps you nice and comfortable. Now, the other thing um, with deciding what roll mat is, as we go up towards this end, they get a bit more faff to pack away at, in the morning when we want to get on with our walking. So with this one, all I have to do, put a strap around it or an elastic and we're done but with these I need to get all the air out first so I'm going to open the valve and then roll it up so that's got most of the air out but because it's self-inflating it's always fighting against me uh, trying to get the air back in so what I'm going to do is close the valve and then unroll it and roll it again to get the last of the air pushed up into the top end so I've got all the leftover air is up in here open that out so that I can push the last of that out And then close the valve so it doesn't self inflate while it's in my bag and that's nicely packed so that's sleeping bags and roll mats lots of options to look at but what's going to keep you nice and warm what's not going to weigh too much to carry about with you for your whole expedition